Moo and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pink Throne. I am Brent Robinson, and with me today is Steph Chen. Steph, what are you drinking? I'm drinking some Sprite. Sprite. Ooh. Is this, this is recovery Sprite? Am I getting this right? Um, kind of. I did, 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 did an hour how to ride, so that's ah. no reason. Oh, nice. nice, nice. And we also have Chris Greenland. Chris, what are you drinking? I'm drinking a recovery LaCroix lemon. I I can't even get to the fridge right now to, to crack Miller Lights. I, HSRL just like wrecked me. I'll get there though. Give me a bit. Yo. Yeah, we'll be talking about that. And we also have Sean Fogenberg. Sean, what are you drinking? Well, let's start with some Foley and I'll, uh, you know, grip it and rip it. Uh, <laughs> so uh because because john isn't here i'm i'm uh continuing to hold down the uh mushroom drink uh contingent of the podcast we've got an odyssey sparkling blackberry lemon twist with lion's mane and cordyceps uh <laughs> and also a stone ipa <laughs> what what's the flavor on the foley did i miss that no, no, Foley is like the sound guys in movies. So he was trying to open it next to the mic. So for those of you who <laughs> oh, are uh, clearly that went over my head. <laughs> it was it Wait, was explain to me what a foley is then. What's a foley? Go ahead, Sean. Oh, it, it didn't come through. It was pretty loud here. Uh, it was quiet on my end too. Yeah, yeah. All right. A fully a fully artist is like when you when you watch a movie and you see like things happening, like a guy like walk across the floor and like make footsteps. Like that happens, but they don't actually really like record it. What they do is they go to something called a Foley studio. I think it's named after the guy who invented it. His, his last name was Foley. And some guy like takes like shoes on sticks and like goes clop, 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 clop. And and like makes all the noises, like all the noises in movies, aside from the dialogue is all made in like a studio by some guy, like watching the movie and like banging things against like stuff and whatever else. And that's Man, a Foley you artist. Just, you just flip my world upside down, Brent. Yeah. I, there's a... There's a podcast. I think it was. Um, I think it was a uh, the economics of everyday things about the. And one of the episodes was about foley artists and stuff like that. I think that's what it was. I highly recommend. Look it up. It was fascinating. All about like and this guy who's like the world's greatest foley artist has like a an entire like he's in his own studio, an entire room full of just like oh I've got like an old car door, and every time someone closes a car door, I just bang it with this thing, and that's what makes the car door sound. And and like all kinds of crazy nonsense. He's got like three hundred different pairs of shoes. Like every time, like he, he they chests out. Like that ah, doesn't really sound like the right pair of shoes and stuff. It was fascinating. That does sound. But I'm gonna go listen to that. I'll see you later, guys. <laughs> you know what else is fascinating is how fast you can ride through <laughs> segments on Heard Summer Racing League race. I'm, I'm glad what that number we're at. Ready and knew what the course was. <laughs> <laughs> Neokio all nighter. Neokio something. Neokio all nighter. <laughs> that is also fascinating. And Chris did it. I did it. I can't it's, walk. Uh, <laughs> it's just yeah, a, you know, it's just a single a lot lap crammed into it's just a single lap. It's just every every few minutes you got to rip yourself apart. It ends up being uh, 24.6k uh with four sprint segments and the rooftop KOM. Ooh, the rooftop yeah. is at the end. Rooftops at the end and then you descend down and finish uh you go through the arcade and finish down at that turn, the glowy arch. And it's just like too much. I I cracked on rooftop right at the start. I had to wave goodbye to the group and just kind of lollygagged my way into the finish but i was there for all the sprints it's just really tough you know what i was thinking as we were doing this is that for the bees this is a lot like hwr like you gotta there's no help coming from behind um you can't like play off trying to catch a group that might come and help you somewhere down the line like you are with the lead from the start and you got to figure out where you can strategically like hang on and then bail uh, and yeah, it was just like there were no, didn't really see that many C's on the road, um, and just had to like wave goodbye to the group at some point, just post my way in. And really some painful. these are all relatively long sprints as well, right? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, you don't get like the zigzaggy one that's Yeah, I guess the Castle super Park. long. So it's it's Castle Park Alley, Castle or Castle Park Reverse Alley, Castle Park and Tower. The Castle Park ones are shorter. R relatively short, yeah. But the Alley Sprint is like it's it's like a 30 second sprint, right? It's listed as 500 meters on Zwift uh, Insider. There It's you long. go. Is There's that no... uh, the is that the side from uh, where you go, the flat side where you go through the market thingy, the the streets? See how also the the one you you go down a bit uh, down at the start. I, I don't remember doing the one where you're zigzagging on the sprint. So that would be like the market side, right? Maybe we did. I just blacked it out. I have, It says honestly, it's only. I have no idea. actually 380 meters long and it starts downhill Yeah, it's it. Then um, it's the the uh, the, it's the other way the one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah maybe so it's you not just as long. I guess they're all like regular, kind of regular length sprints. regular I was about to, I was about to say say but you didn't mention it so the the one on the rail tracks wasn't uh, included because I know that's the longer one But uh, there are sprints at, what is that, about, so there's one about two and a half K in, but then like eight, 10, and 11, like they're, the, the alley sprint, castle park sprint, tower sprint really do come all within a like five minute period. Yeah. And then there's a little rise up to you got to get up to like railway level and you do hit that banner, even though it's not a counted sprint for this. So you get a power up back before rooftop and then you hit it on the way down again, even, again, even though it's not a segment for this. So you'll get an extra power up between the rooftop arch and the finish banner. So do you think that, uh, Are, were you dead because you were pushing on those on that that trio of sprints, uh, or were you even then just in the like survival mode? Oh, it was a rich tapestry of suck for me. Um, I've been on a, I recently discovered workout plans on Zwift. So I've had a couple of long weeks where I put in some work yesterday. I did like a 90 minute tempo workout. So not super fresh legs coming in, having a pretty large relative A group mixed in with our B group of which like scorekeeper was in there, like really driving the pace on the flats. Um, And I feel like I did really well on the sprints to the point where after that last one, I was doing all I could to kind of hang on to the group to get to rooftop. Um, I was just kind of on the limit there. So it all, it all culminated in me uh, just pulling the ripcord and going backwards. Uh, What any... bike did you ride? Did you ride a sprint, uh, a full arrow? Full arrow, yeah. I think so. Roof chop's pretty flat. Yeah. Lots of sprints first. Looks like you still got uh, a fourth place, so. I don't think everything's been coming Oh no, up that's yet. yeah, it looks like that's not going to be the No. actual standing. Definitely not. All right. Uh any Let's any see. other pieces of, of wisdom for this week? Um, I did try the fan view hack when I was just kind of noodling around by myself and it works, but I noticed that at least for me, it only works on the person that you're fan viewing. It only puts them on the leaderboard. It doesn't put everybody in the category on the leaderboard, which was, that's what I was hoping for, mm. but it didn't work out that way. So I fan viewed a C and I was like, okay, now I see that C, but then another C came zooming by me as I was just kind of making my way through the arcade, looking at all, all, all the games. And I was like, oh, I didn't see that person on my leaderboard. So then you have to you have to go individual by individual and fan view them, and then they show up. So that's a little bit, a little rough. But no, no other words of wisdom. That's not even a word of wisdom. 
Might have been one word of wisdom. Somewhere in there. <laughs> uh, let's just put a pin in uh, for around the horn. I, I'd like to hear how the um, how you're finding the Zwift workout plans. Okay, yeah, sure. I saw you. I saw you in, on uh, Companion. You had an actual workout in, so I was curious if you were actually doing a plan. Yeah, I've done a few now. We'll talk about yeah. what my new workout plan is going to be also in around the horn. <laughs> Just yeah, I saw some some picture one of the on, on Strava that you uh, indeed that's like the one of the FTP builder programs I think on it. Yep, there it is. Uh, Spoiler alert! Uh, all right, all right. Um, yeah, I don't. We are in second last week of ne of HSRL, so we got one more next week, and then no idea what's starting after that. I'm not. I haven't seen it in the herd group chat or anything, so I don't know that anyone knows. Nice. Everything bagel starting next or is the, the finale yeah. next week. The queen stage and the last stage at the same time. Uh, I think that uh, at least Mario line had the, the three little sisters last week listed as the mm. queen stage. Fair enough. Yeah, that's fair. Those New York KOMs are a lot shorter, just steeper. Good. Good. All right. That brings us to herd beginner racing, which um is on deuce fonts this week and it is still going to be deuce fonts even though and we will wait is that is that right it is still right okay it's listed as tiktok in the main uh, oh i thought in the I, I see deuce oh sorry you're right for the 27th sorry tiktok this week deuce fonts next week i can't read dates apparently pardon me tiktok this week but you were saying. But I guess maybe it's actually starting next week. Hang on, let's double check the messages. Yes. The Zwift Racing Score stuff. Yeah. 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 That that'll be starting next week. And that we'll also uh talk about that a little later as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So but so, TikTok, yeah, for this week. TikTok is a course that we've uh that that if you've been doing the herd beginner racing, you know the the route well. Um it's you you go do the desert you go up the little cold de saddle springs back through the uh the underwater ocean boulevard and then back up to the finish at the desert flats um total of about 19k i think with the lead in um and and really the main split points are in the are that cold de saddle springs and the little uh, that little punch and then and then drag up back to the desert. Um, probably fastest arrow that you've got is your is your best chance or is your best bike. Yeah, and it's basically become what that I think uh, one of the classics that I checked the tap. It's basically at the end of every month. And is it is it just it's it's one yeah one lap for both for all the categories so yeah does seem like that cool. for now for this one yep so yeah uh, that's not that's not much to say like I said there are a couple of points not not breakaway material but uh potential for paying it uh, that you have to pay attention you don't get dropped like you said Cold saddle springs the rises out of the water tunnel followed by that uphill back into the desert but yep yep and your best arrow race thing yeah yeah, yeah. whatever you got i mean if you got a full arrow set up by all means, if you're, I'll be frank, leaving aside whatever level you are, if you have already leveled up to like 35 or whatever, so you get the full disc that you probably aren't really in the third beginner racing, but that's yeah. it, as long as yeah, you have uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, like, like uh, Steve mentioned again, uh, uh, he, uh Nathan, still a uh, good, not uh, very detailed posts every, every week with everything in it, the wheels, uh, frame set. And if you're not sure 
which is the fastest you can get to the sort of side or as a the good good, good uh, few links to to see you at what's the best at certain levels that you need to aim for. And that bring yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I think you can say about herd beginner racing for this week. Uh, yeah, that will bring us to the herd climbers gambit. Chris, we are in what the last week of uh, the the no was it class schools out series or classes out series? Well, you're on you're on mute. <laughs> or your headset disconnected. You're not coming through at all, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we are just nailing it here. Uh, I will <laughs> say that uh, so oh. on our on our spreadsheet. Chris has this uh, still listed as TBD new climb. Uh, I, a couple of days ago, went and uh, took a look on the, uh, in Zwift, the, the Zwift companion app and signed up uh, and noticed that Chris had, uh, it is using new climb, but man, he's done something mean. You guys hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, just in time. Um, yeah, I mean, mean would be debatable. Um, challenging would be another way to put it. If, if, if James Bailey con uh, congratulates you for, for following his lead, it's probably going in the, the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had that, that same thought as well, Steph. But yeah, we are on the grade uh, for our final exam, as it were. D's, you get off easy with one lap. C's, you got to do uh, the grade twice, so two laps of O oh, Hill No, and then A's and B's, we're going to do it uh, three times, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it'll be your combined time for as many climbs as you're in for, and that will be your your time for this weekend. Uh, and so the grade itself is 3.5K at 8.6%. Uh, I can't really give you good estimates of what that time is going to be uh, because not many people I'm following who've actually done this yet uh, or done a like actual full effort. Um, yeah. My guess is that uh, a lot of people are going, you know, I think that the, the fast A's are probably going to be in the 15 minute range somewhere in there for, I, I, do we remember, did anyone uh, see what the, uh, I know that but I watched um, Nathan Guerra's. It was around 15, 15 minutes. Yeah. So that's probably the, the like fast A range. Um, it looks like on Strava, the, the current uh, KOM is in the six, is a 14 minute range. Um, so fast B is probably 17. Uh, C's might actually be right around that 20 minute mark. Yeah, um, I'm getting like 18 to 20 for myself. Well, yeah, so, uh, and that is assuming that you're only doing one effort. Uh, if you're doing three, you might need to basically just do essentially threshold. Um, and just see what you can do holding threshold up there. Um, personally, I'm because I would like to get a good a good estimate of like I want to see what the estimate that they give me for FTP is um, based on a all out effort. I might go all out on the first one and then just see what I can do on the second, um, like survive rather than trying to do my best combined time. Oh, that's interesting because yeah so oh. that was that was part of why i was like well i you know it's two it's two climbs but am i gonna do two am i gonna actually try and do two max well you know the max combined effort or am i gonna try and do a one a one lap max and then whatever i can do on the second one because i, I i'm really interested in seeing what that like what that estimate looks like and what a like full effort on that feels like 
um, because I have a I have a feeling this is going to end up being my test climb. Yeah, for for reference, I did a did a max effort on it. Uh, to, uh, it's like two hundred twenty watts, three point one watts per kilo for for me. That's and that's set me a new FTP over a uh, two or four, and uh, did it eight and a half minutes. So and I'm lowish C, so C's. Uh, uh, High seas should should get it uh, done uh, faster than that. Sorry, what did you say the time was? Eighteen and a half minutes. I did at three point one. Okay, yeah. that's a good that's a good benchmark. Drafting is not much of a factor here, so all those times should carry over. And, yeah. And what do we consider the like honor rule here in terms of rest? Like, like if I if I just decide to like sit up at the top for an hour are we saying that's well then you're dead to me brent okay uh, you're only cheating yourself <laughs> well i mean that the, the the like i just there there's a, there's the rules and there's the rules <laughs> the only reason that's not against the rule is because i can't specifically write it into the scoring that i yeah. can outlaw that so so like just keep moving people keep moving there's no yeah. need for a bike change just keep it moving Put her down mm. to zone one, cruise <clears throat> down the bottom, easy till you hit the line again, and then go. No, yeah. no, don't be too silly. Yeah, you can treat it if you want. Uh, yeah, you could do a full effort or consider it as like a two or three by 15 to 20 minutes uh, threshold effort <laughs> workout, whatever. Uh so just on Zwift Insider, I'm I'm taking a look at um their uh metrics from bots. Um and if you are doing it at two watts a kilo, it's 27 and a half essentially. Um three watts is 1847. Yeah. Four, yeah, makes sense. four is actually 1422. So those those times are actually it, it's gonna be a lot faster than 15. Um like I think the fast Bs are going to be sub 14. Um, five watts a kilo, 11.44. Four, uh, four did it? 4.0 did it in 14? 14.22. Yeah, Bs, the fast Bs now are 4.4, 4.5 over that stretch yeah. probably. Yeah, so that'll be, you know, fast Bs are in that probably 13 minute range. Um. Five watts a kilo gets you there, 11.44, six at 10. And there's probably not a ton of people who are going a lot higher than six watts a kilo for 10 minutes. Um, no, they'll be doing something else on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. yeah I see a couple of on the Strava leaderboards, some uh, names I recognize as like pro, uh, pro Swifters or ex pros. Uh, that done it under two, under ten minutes. So yeah. Yeah. Sorry. When I was looking at it uh, to start, I I had the full oh hill no uh, uh, pulled up for the time. So that that fifteen minutes what or the fourteen minute like record was for up and down. Yeah, and maybe that was the time I was remembering from uh, Nate Guerra's feed. Might have been the full ride right before they hit the stretch of the climb yeah and it's it, it's an interesting climb because you have basically first that uh, first section where you have the basically straight through to the through the town it's basically uh, uphill then you have a I think 500 meter flattish checks and then it goes up and uh, it gets uh with some hairpins and it gets steeper near the end so so definitely it's basically survival at the moment, but keep some uh, something in the tank for that uh, last uh, few stretches because it goes above ten percent at certain sections near the top. Also, also you probably since it's uh, in a race environment, you won't have like the. I don't know if it's it will do if you have the like the. 
normal how it do does now your the 10 segments on the left side and your average power uh listed so i think don't think so probably in uh in a race environment yeah that that doesn't show up on the alp right when you're racing on the alp like those the segments the segment times and and averages over on the left i don't think they do so i don't yeah. remember yeah, it's been a while since any. Of, <laughs> I, well, actually, to be fair, we all. I mean, I did on uh, the Clyburn's Gambit. Like, yeah, just we just gambited on ago, it. But yeah, uh, the the brain goes blank about what the what actually shows up on the the UI when you're doing that. Yeah, we have a look yeah, at some of our screenshots. Yeah, because I found it very. I found it very. It's very, very useful when you're doing it like in normal mode. You have that the segments for the average, but your overall average on the climb uh, to see see if you're still uh, if still uh, target. Steph, how did you find uh, the pacing? Uh, and did you have a hard time, or or did you? either holding power or did you take that flat part in the middle as a bit of a break? I can't, I uh, can't remember if maybe you can see if, uh, if I dropped my power a bit on things, watching on Strava. I think I slowed a bit down also. So yeah, my pacing probably could have been better because I was going in it just did a full effort, but uh, going in blind basically didn't know what what uh, what the percentages were, were how it distributed. Yeah, uh, the alt sectors I, I, do show up. Just to, sorry to okay. interrupt, but they they do show up on. Those. Yeah, I think on the flat section, I definitely slowed. Uh, I, I think uh, took a bit of a breather on that flatter section. Uh, if I could. Yeah, I was doing like, yeah, I think uh, still was, a, uh, was a bit of a, of a breeder on that last section. But like I said, it's gets steeper near the end and it's, yeah. then be, and it, it's tough because it's it, there you need the most power, but, but there you're also near the end. So you're basically in survival mode, uh, just keeping the power on. To be fair, I think that actually for pacing uh, in a race environment, you do want to uh, take a breather in that that flatter section yeah. in the middle because you do want that uh, that extra little oomph for the steep bit at the end. You're going to gain more time by having that power at the end than you are going to lose on the flat. Yeah. Uh, in a in a racing environment, like a scratch race or whatever, yeah, you can definitely take a breather. But, you know, even even on climbers gambit, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, you can take a bit bit off. It's like, uh, like uh, on those flatter, depending on how you you pace it on the flatter section of, in, like say Innsbruck uh, reverse or that volcano flat section. I mean, I yeah, always but... understood from the communication on this that the 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 slight change in grade, maybe not so much the pause part, like part of that is all a bit of like the science of the testing of it. Like it's supposed to get harder to kind of like really squeeze out whatever that FTP number really is. Like there's some sort of magic and all that in terms of how they're going to run the regression or whatever it is that they've used to spit out the formula for the FTP number. So. I think that's the idea. Like the, they want to, they're testing you to see how hard you can press when it gets steeper, closer to the end. Yeah. So. That cool. makes sense. I'm excited. Uh, I I think this is climbing bike, like full yeah. full climber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's eight and a half percent for two, uh, three and a half kilometers, but you. That includes that 500 meter basically flat section. So basically, 
the rest climbing your oh. nine, ten percent above and above. So yeah, yeah, so the first basically there's there's a 250 meters at like seven percent, eight percent, seven ish percent to start, and then it's nine or ten for a kilometer, and then you have that that like few hundred meters flat, and then there's another seven percent section, but then by the end you're you're at thirteen percent near the end. Um, yeah, that's the and basically that eighteen and a half was eleven and a half kilometers per hour. So <laughs> that it's climbing territory. Yeah. But you do have a fa fast downhill on the on the going down. Not yeah, much I mean, recover. Not much recovery, but. <laughs> Right. The fact that you have to do it again makes me wish that the uh, descent was a little less steep. Yeah. <laughs> it needs like a like a, a mountain bike, like, you know, like one way up, one way down or something like extra long down with lots of switchbacks. <laughs> Good. Well, that's that's fun. I mean, uh, it, yeah, well, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong word. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I think uh, people were. I think it's, but it's a great addition. It's basically like I said. It's uh, like uh, depending on your level between a ten and a twenty minute uh, uh, or even thirty minute climb. So so for a lot of people, I think some people said around this this time uh, this period of effort there wasn't really. A climb because volcano you could do it under ten minutes, and the next one are are the epics, and that's like yeah, going into that twenty like. twenty minutes plus range. So so it's it's a perfect connection between those uh, two for the yeah. Uh, it, I think it is like the there's the volcano and Bologna that are like nine, eight, nine, ten, twelve, whatever minutes. This is going to be that like that that bridge between those climbs and Epic and Innsbruck. Um, I I I feel like this is one of the the types of climbs that we've been missing. So I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and along with that, that double climb on um, the coastal crown loop, and that that the ZRL uh, ended with a couple weeks ago. That's the Mayan mountainside and Itza Kam. Um, another good, like mid length, you know, fifteen ish minutes of climbing. Um, even though that's a lot different. Uh, set of gradients um it's it's a really fun that's a really fun combo for racing yeah if you wanna that first one is basically vo2 max or above uh, but if you want to do a full effort on both yeah it's uh, also a good effort also for pacing because like i said that first one is pretty even but uh mayan but uh, it's a climb it's all over the place uh, in terms uh, of how you want to pace that because it goes up and down and gets steeper near the end yeah i think that 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 combo actually does feel like the uh supersized volcano because it's you know you've got the the first half where you've got you know you're 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 going up and then you've got a flatter middle and then rolling to rolling to steep by the end um which does feel a lot like the volcano uh but yeah so i think this should be a fun uh a fun yeah like brent said maybe fun isn't the right word but uh a challenging weekend for climbers gambit i'm excited about it yeah i don't actually the one time would be one thing it's the the three times that's the part that would give me some like now i want to vomit type vibes <laughs> <laughs> that third that third 15 minute effort is really gonna feel tough it's a good yeah. workout that i mean it is this is a really great uh i mean chris really really well uh 
well planned because this does end up being uh, based on your category. Like everybody's getting the proper workout for where they're probably at. Like the B's and C's should probably be able to do like a three by three by 15 uh, threshold plus like workout. Um, you know, the, the C's should be able to do something closer to a two by 20 threshold. Like, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, clearly I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Thanks. All right. That brings us to the herd of mountain goats. I think it went last week. Oh, did they? Road. What was it? Yeah. Yes. It showed up. It shows up in Zwift power. It's showing up next week as Mayan mash. I think that was the last week, probably. Yeah, because... that, that was last week, so I cannot find any reference anywhere to what is coming up again. That's As also... That, that, that's one of the tougher ones for the new routes, basically. That was Powerall Call Direct. You do that. Uh, basically, it's a super climb at the beginning. Because you have, like, uh, Mayan, Itza, then second part, great. Final section, top section of Epic KOM forward, downhill, hill. You take the Epic bypass, you do Epic forward until where the grade comes and you go down, basically. It's about. But yeah, it's going to be some, some route probably. I think if, uh, if it, he stays consistent, because a week before that, it was also one of the routes on uh, one of the new routes, probably, maybe. Another one, climby one, because uh, basically they're all climby ones uh, of the of the new routes. Let's just say, you know, it's probably something like 10 laps of O'Hill now. That is going to take a long time. Yeah, I can't find... I can't find any information about... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that's, how, that's how it goes. We we are not the best source of information for uh, climbers can or for uh, mount, uh, herd of mountain goats. Like, I'm even looking at, like, the Zwift Power, the event description, <laughs> like... June third was oh uh, no, it looks like June third was Octobon. That looks like the last event that actually shows up in the series. So I have no idea. Sorry guys. Anyway, I know what's going on with the Stampede. Let's go with that. This week on Stampede, we were doing one lap of Volcano Circuit, it's just shy of seven k. It forty meters of climbing. This is the last one for this week. Um. And yeah, I mean, bring your fastest aero bike. Um, there might be some little bit of we're working with WTRL and results, so if those don't get properly sorted, look like we were going to 10 to 12. Um, we will post Alan will probably post the results into the Facebook group, so just hang tight with us on that. Um, yeah, one lap of volcano, so it's basically a flat rear, right? You're gonna start from downtown Penns go into the volcano through the banner and then all the way around the volcano back to the banner. Um, there's a bit of rolliness to it, but not much. And what's so, the distance on this one? Just under seven. Seven K. Uh, and so for anyone who didn't ever figure out what the, uh, the series was, do you want to? Oh yeah. I would say it is. The, the idea was that every race was a, a distance that was a prime number. So the first 10 prime numbers and they get 29. Um, Right. I guess that's the week because are we still on break from bullseye? I nope. believe so. Or is it back? No. Nobody knows. I think it's still on hiatus. I haven't seen anybody put him back on yet, so it'll be back in the fall, I think. Yeah. 
And I think that is the week of herd racing. So around the horn, I, I guess, well, let's, we got to start with uh, the workouts and stuff. Yeah. First. So Chris, what, uh, first, what was the, what was the idea? What prompted you to uh, decide to do a workout plan? And then why did you choose Zwift and how, like the Zwift plans and what'd you choose? How's it going? Yeah. Um, I think what, prompted me to I mean really I've never done any workouts on Zwift I never really messed around with that I would do a lot of pacer pacer rides and racing and that's pretty much it but I was poking around in the menus before riding one day a couple weeks ago and I saw the spring training icon pop up so I um I popped into a couple of those and, and thought it was really interesting and engaging and I definitely found myself sweating a little bit more than I would have rather than like just tucking in with Bernie or Miguel for a little bit. Um, so I had a look at the different options in the workout section on companion app and was doing some reading in the forums. And I was like, well, first time going at it. What's a, what's a good one to start with? I ended up with the F I think it's the FTP builder plan, the six week version. So I signed up for that. I said, okay, yeah, I mean, FTP building sounds like a good thing. Rather have a bigger FTP than a smaller one. So I'll just give that a go. And yeah, I've done that on week two of that. I will probably have to take a little pause here because I do want to duck into the chasing tour, at least the first week. And then we have a little bit of a family vacation. So we'll probably have like two weeks off from the plan, but it looks like uh, Zwift has written some flexibility into that now where you can step away for a couple weeks and come back and still get credit for your progress and what you've done so far and just pick up where you left off. So that's the plan right now. And yeah, I I, I do find it just uh, maybe, you know, working on a different skill set, um, engaging me in a different way with... Uh, you know, having to hit certain power targets and zones and, and all that stuff. So it's, I feel like renewed my, my level of engagement in, in how hard I'm going on this. But like I said, when we were talking about HSRL, it does, it does tax the legs a little bit. So, um, uh, got to factor that much into it, but as, as Kelly Clarkson said, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Uh, so that that um, that plan looks like it's really it's it's mostly a combination of aerobic like endurance rides plus uh, like two um, two actual like workout days a week um, with kind of increasing um, intensity of the like either intensity or time and zone um doing like sweet spot and threshold Does that sound about right if you say that? so if you say so i just log in and I hit the button and then it, it shows me some blue bars and then some green bars and i just pedal pedal what the screen tells me to do <laughs> that's are you i mean riding it all erg mode? what's that are you, are you riding it all in erg mode uh yes except for there are some bits where the screen will pop up and say we're doing a 10 second effort here we recommend you turning off erg mode because the, it'll take too long for it to react so for those i mean this is where like the play controllers are super handy like you can just flip through the menus on that switch it off on the fly shift to where you need to be for your power output and then just flip it on as soon as you hit whatever banner but yeah mostly uh, I found, yeah i found it too well well for those shorter efforts, it it tells you like uh, do a V two at I don't know three hundred watts. But if you go full out, you go way beyond above that. That's usually, but yeah, yeah. I did get uh, only a half star in a couple of segments because I was putting out yeah. too much power. I was like, well, that yeah. Doesn't... Why are you docking me for going over? Whatever. Yeah. I like when you get a half star in the recovery segment. That's always my favorite. <laughs> like, what did I do wrong? You didn't recover hard enough. <laughs> Uh, so I'll be, I'll be interested to hear your review at the end. Um, just looking at the, uh, 
the plan, my guess is that you will not find it hard enough um, to actually get kind of like maximum benefit from it. Um, because you are actually fairly well trained already. Um, but yeah, I'll be interested to hear how it hear how it goes. Yeah, I, I again, it's not like a couch to Zwift scenario for me per se, where this I think would have the most impact. But it is building in that structure that I was Yep. sort of lacking. Um, so that's what's giving me a little bit more discipline, other than like, hey, I got forty five minutes. Should I ride around and sit on the wheel of a pacer bot for a bit, or no? This this is pushing me a little bit more, and I like that. So. Yeah. Uh, and it, it sounds like you're maybe going to be adding in chasing tour or, or chasing, yeah, the chasing yellow or, and, and I assume you're still doing like climbers gambit and you're still doing HSRL. So Yeah, these there's are not. no way I could drop this on everybody's calendar for Climber's Gambit and not do it. So I will fully be doing this with everybody. Uh, and then, yeah, I do want to just like the chasing tour is so cool. It's like Zwift is a video game and you want to play it on season mode. Like this is the ultimate way to do that. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to finish it, but I think I could do like the first eight, maybe nine stages before I got to peel out and virtually abandon, um, if that makes sense. But yeah. So I'll, I'll training. I'll take a backseat to doing that for a week, week and a couple of days. I will Also, just inter go ahead. also interesting, interesting about that because some people say the the Zwift work uh, workout plans or workouts aren't the greatest. But I was listening to uh, to uh, another Zwift podcast, the uh, Watopium Weekly, last week, which had uh, Eric Schlang of a Zwift Insider. And it was interesting that I was saying. some stuff that could happen and there was a possibility that uh Zwift was opening the API so that's like uh other organizations can uh put uh workouts plans or workouts on on Zwift like for instance uh we talked about it before probably won't come out then but more AI generated uh workouts uh Stuff like uh, joint cycling it would be interesting if uh, other workout plans from other from trainers also uh, go on go on Swift uh, through that API. It would be interesting to see. But yeah, because mm. like like uh, I abandoned uh, my my training because that but I had for a while. Um, Like a personal trainer, and uh, he did it through uh, training speaks that he set up my workout for that day, and it's yeah that connects to to uh, uh, to Zwift uh, uh, easily. So so it's would be interesting to see that what that will bring. Nice. I might need a walkthrough again at some point. I know we talked about this many moons ago, but how, I don't have a Training Peaks account. But if I do end up like pulling a workout plan from outside, I know there's a way to link it up. I think Craig walked us through that a while back. I might need a refresh on that at some point. Just uh, I have, I have I don't Training Peaks, but I probably will cancel my because uh, I only did a year. subscription because of my trainer but since it's in the abandoned data probably uh gonna end that subscription i know uh, i've been using it's not be for my data analysis i'm using also uh, intervals icu for looking at it but when the training speaking is interesting yeah you can plot especially if you have a trainer who can put up your workouts on that uh Uh, it syncs with with Swift on that day, so that's interesting. If you're really in structured training mode, yeah. good to know. Uh, we did we did mention uh, the chasing series. Uh, it sounds like Chris might be interested. Brent was talking about it too. Do we want to? Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm thinking of doing it. So just 
to to give everyone who's maybe not familiar or doesn't follow all this stuff that so there's a a whole broader series called Chasing Tour. And Chasing Tour is like a year-long competition where the organizers have tried to line up a series of races with whatever's happening in real life um competitive world tour cycling, right? So um you know when the classics are on they run races called things like i don't know like chasing cobbles or something like that i can't remember what they're called but you know as it goes along and they try to like create a race that sort of simulates whatever's going on so you know if they're racing um well and san remo or baston liege baston liege baston liege sorry i'm terrible at pro cycling stuff um they'll they'll schedule some route on some race that vaguely resembles whatever's going on there over the whole year but as part of that, within it, there's smaller little ones. So like when Giro d'Italia is on, there's the Chasing Pink um, series. And when the uh, Espana, Tour de Espana, I think it's called Tour de Espana, right? The Vuelta. Vuelta. The Vuelta, Vuelta. de Espana. There we go. See, I don't know Spanish either. We don't have much Spanish in Canada compared to French. Um, then it's the Chasing Red. And for the Tour de France, they're putting on the Chasing Yellow competition. And it is 21 days in a row of racing, which like, well, not in a row because you do get the rest days, right? Yep, factors in rest days. It is, is it the same good? days as the oh, tour. Okay, okay, there is rest days on July 8th and on the Mondays, so the 8th yeah. and the 15th, 15th, and the 15th. So there, there, that's actually handy. I usually have rest on Monday, so um, <laughs> anyway, Just look yeah, but... are you looking at these? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, they, they have taken the book out of the the the, the Flam Rouge guys because <laughs> there are some uh, some not not for the climb maybe not for the meters of elevation but uh, yeah some longer ones. They are they are for the faint of heart. So it's <laughs> stage one eats a party forty five point. Well, I don't know. Should we run through these? Is that too boring to list each one? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, maybe maybe talk about some of the some of the highlights. Any of them that that stand out to you? Well, I guess the first thing to note is that there's two individual time trials. One on Eastern Eight, which isn't too bad for 25k, but the yeah, last day of the to... thing is an individual time trial on Glyph Heights, 33.4 kilometers with 537 meter climb, which is cruel. Which actually yeah. is fairly similar to the, so this year the tour actually finishes with an individual time trial uh, on a hilly course. Um, mm -hmm. they, it doesn't finish in Paris? No, because the no. Uh, the Olympics. Olympics are in Paris this year. Oh. And so they had to reschedule the final day of the tour and not use Paris. So they're, this is one of the first times it's it's ended in a time trial in like, I don't know, 30 something years uh yeah. i know that that uh it was what 89 that uh greg lemon beat laurent fignon on the last day mm -hmm. in a time trial and i think that like broke the french um and so they've yeah. they've just never had time trials to finish since then but but that one is that, that, that one is is a mean one because you basically start it's one of the new routes you start at the you plan so the great, you do the flat bit part, and then you have that basically the a mountain combo, which I explained already. It's basically Mayan eats uh, last part, second part of the great and the top section of uh, of the epic KOM. You go down through the jungle and end up Mayan again. So pacing wise, that's that's an interesting one. Uh, and that if if you are actually doing the full uh, the full series or or a lot of it, uh, that ITT is actually following two mountain days. Uh, so yeah. stage nineteen is on Quatch Quest. Uh, so forty six k, sixteen hundred, almost seventeen hundred meters of climbing, and then Surrey Hills forty four k and over a thousand meters of climbing. Um, and I think that. Like Chris said, this is um, one of the fun things about this is this really does get 
it's not as long, right? So rather than 200K days, they're 40 something K days, maybe 50. Uh, but you are getting the feeling of those, of those days, right? So they've done a good job to match the actual tour schedule with a shorter, and, but like a uh, similar type of stage. Um, yeah, and especially, and especially since since it's all uh, indoors, so basically like uh, a forty k ride or two hour rides on on Zwift is compared to to two and a half hours to three hours in indoors, and it's it takes a lot of uh, mental capacity. I still have props for people have done. Couple of longer rides. I did one of the four horsemen, which was my longest ride ever on Zwift. But nowadays, going over like two uh, two hours on Zwift, it's tough. <laughs> it's mentally tough. Yeah. Uh, you, you, even you, you you see see the you have something to 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 look at, uh, especially against previous when you had basically a real on train and you put on a, a series or whatever. But even then. The lens, it's something different than our riding outdoors. So it's uh, kudos okay. for all those crazy people doing long, uh, extreme long rides on Zwift. I, th I got to think I'm going to be close to two hours on Quatch. Like, that's. Yeah. Like well, yeah, because one of those Alp. hours is just the just Alp. The Alp. Yeah. Like, if I can do a one hour Alp after riding in a race for 30 eight kilometers yeah no not qu quite that far 34 and that's with the previous x amount of racing days already in your legs yeah exactly, exactly. uh so if you are interested in joining uh go to chasingtour.com um and you've got to register for the chasing tour um and then get your racing passes there um and this actually i think transitions into the next thing we want to talk about there in Chasing Tour and or Chasing Yellow, they're doing categorization using the Zwift Racing dot app racing uh, ranking system. Uh, so you get categorized based on you know are you silver, gold, amethyst, whatever, um, all the way up. Um, and Zwift now will have their own uh, ranking system that they have begun or will begin testing, I guess on Monday, uh, running test events um, with the new Zwift racing score. So uh, I know that we have talked about this before because there was a Zwift racing score for about one hot minute, uh, like <laughs> a year ago. Um, was that late, late last summer or was that maybe even in the fall uh, that it was, available but never really used and then people complained and they decided that it wasn't really up to the standards that they had hoped um and so it disappeared again but the idea was sound right the the idea really was what we would like is some results-based categorization system uh so that all of the sandbagging uh, complaints that people had about the, the categorization system that was getting used before were sidestepped to some degree, right? Because how do, in terms of what you, what you really want is to be racing people that are around the same level as you uh, in order to have a fun time on Zwift, right? Uh, and a lot of times that ends up not working out because you, if you're basing it on 20 minute power only, uh, you might end up with people who have really crazy one to five minute power, uh, whatever. Um, and in the real world, right, they, the way that you do this is you, people who race really well, you upgrade them to the next category up. Uh, and the goal is to get to the highest category you can, right? Um, so, with racing.app, I think does a really good job of, of this results-based categorization and really getting a good estimate of where you are 
uh, where your current level is. And, and from everything I've seen, like it does a really good job of, of actually predicting like for any given race where people might finish. Um, and that's kind of what, what you want, right. Is a, is a, an estimate of like how strong all the different riders are so that when you categorize them, you end up racing <laughs> people that are around the same level. Um, and it turns out that they brought the, uh, the guy in, Kim Hansen, who, who uh, developed the Zwift Racing app in as a consultant uh, to help bring their Zwift Racing score up to snuff, right? So if it wasn't working before, um, hopefully it is now. Um, so we don't know what the exact formula is, but we do know that it's initially you have a you have a kind of base score, a seed score that is based on your 30 second power and your 10 second or your 10 minute power. So it does kind of give you uh, something based on your anaerobic, your your sprint power, and something based on your kind of maximal aerobic somewhere between maximal maximal aerobic and FTP. Um, and then you gain or lose points based on how well you do in races and who else is in those races with you. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the, the events will be starting, uh, starting soon. There are only certain certain events that are going to be using this to start off with. So the Z racing series is probably the, the number one thing that a lot of people will be uh, signing up for. And they have either a five category system or a 10 category system with narrower ranges. Uh, but also the crit racing, Zwift crit racing club, the Zip, the Zwift hill climb racing series. So um, depending on, I'm I'm interested in in potentially racing some of those, which might mean maybe not racing uh, Timer's Gambit for a little while. Um, but the Zwift Women's mm. Women's Racing Series, SZR Summer High Low Series, the the tiny races. So I think that's where a lot of people are going to be running into this for the first time. And also, and this I think is really uh, important for all of us, and maybe not all of us sitting here, but for the herd. Uh, herd beginner racing is also one of the test events. Um, so starting not this weekend, but next weekend, um, all of the events in the HBR series are going to be scored and, cate and, and, and categorized uh, using these new, um, the new Zwift racing score. Um, and I think Brent has some more information from Nate, Nathan on like what those categories look like. Yeah, so we're going to be using it in Herbina Racing, and the categories are just the note here. Um, so they're, they're, they're going to be a little narrower again, but there's going to be well, five groups. Um, so the it's going to go all the way up to 500. That seems high to me, but anyway. Yeah, yeah so so from what I've seen, 500 is kind of like a mid C level. Um, maybe yeah. So so I'm in that like 540 range. Yeah, um, so 598. But so I thought it was just why I said that. But anyway, so there's five bands, and uh, this so it's from zero to 200, 200 to 300, 300 to 375, 375 to 450, and 450 to 500. So. Um, and I think I think that uh, the reason that you have smaller bands the higher up you go is that there's probably more. I think that that there's probably a central tendency to all of this that on average, the average rider should be around 500. Um, so there should be a lot of people in that kind of 500 ish range. And the further away you get from 500, the more rare those scores are going to be. Um, Yes. So you need wide bands at the at the edges to be able to get uh, good good numbers in there. Yeah, and I guess the thing to know, I mean, I I'm just looking at too, is, is that 
if you haven't done five races, just I'm just really noting this because it's for her beginner. So lots of these people may not have done um, a race. You will still get a score using some sort of calculation based off your best five minute power. So everybody should get a score. I don't know what you have to do to get it's, zero in your five minute. No, it's not the it's not the five minute power. It's that combination of thirty second and ten minute power that that sets your seed score as far yeah. as I can tell. Well, they're lying to me on Zwift Power. <laughs> <laughs> I was just reading it straight on Zwift Power. <laughs> What's I, your think, uh, <laughs> I think uh, the, to compare it to, I think uh, for the, from the Zwift Racing app, that has uh, some merits to the five minute power. I think that's uh, as a, some kind of uh, compound score for their initial seat, if I remember co correctly. Yeah. So anyway, you'll, you'll, there'll be something in there that will approximate that you've done some races. And, and if you're doing and that's actually for now, I think almost everyone's score is pretty much aside from maybe some, like if you've raced in Z racing recently or, or those kinds of things, but you can go and look at your score on Zwift power right now. Um, yeah, mine is a 598.03. Right. Oh, means. right. So close to 600. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We don't, we don't actually know what any of this means. Um, like you, but you could tell me my score is 5 million. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm a third. I'm a three thirty. So, <laughs> but, but I think that the point is that all of those scores at this point really are based almost entirely on your, on power rather than racing. So it's that combination of 30 second and 10 minute as like, this is based on the Zwift Insider and the FAQs um, that they're using to set your seed score. Um, and those will change once you uh, participate in participating series, right? So in races that are actually scored based on these. While it's in the test, I think, yeah. I mean, the objective eventually is to get it all in there. But yes, mm -hmm. while we're... They're still technically in the beta zone, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's it, it, it's definitely interesting because, um, well, I, I said it in our chat before, but since I'm the captain of the ladder team, I'm more into the velo scoring uh, system. I know I'm C, but uh, I'm more with the uh, with the uh, different medals, and so so far, indeed, uh, that's. Seems about right if you look uh, because we did a race our last race and if you then look at our the results and uh, and the different power uh, uh, the rankings it was pre pretty accurate. Sometimes you have uh, some some uh, so, some uh, some exceptions uh, that that um, get improved immensely, but but it has some it is. It's quite a nice structure, and it's also to, that that site also takes in consideration because it's still based on has some compound score in it. So if you improve your compound score, you get 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 also a basic upgrade. But you like like you said with that seed score, or you can move up pretty quickly because I've seen people in the in 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 the ranking system go up in like two or three races go up of three to, uh, to uh, per race one rank they move up like 200 points because they do extremely great or they're the it's it's quite interesting to see how it it flows and I also i like it with i don't know if Zwift will do it but uh with the Zwift racing app it does the your terrain handicaps uh, calculated in it so so depending on the races if you you do well you have like uh a good on a flat section for 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 me instance of like an 810 which is mid bronze but but if you take in consideration on my flat i'm basically in the 900 range of, which is uh, which is uh silver so it's quite interesting to see that and Will will be interesting to see how Zwift uh, Zwift will turn out because also the the fun thing with the Zwift Racing app is you can see it on race per race basis how much where you drop and 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 you can go to the race and 
see the analysis. Uh, he jumped up six points and I uh, went down six points. And you, you can see for yourself. And, and it's it's also nice there. You have off, it's, it's, it's never before the race, but after the race, you have your results. And then how it calculates what the system thought you would do, position you would take based on your 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 velo your velo score score and in f quite a few races it's quite it, it's quite predictable yeah you, you certainly have your exceptions that people do well in it whether it's with our ladder battle race one of my teammates got third place which is extremely well for him because he was predicted like out of a field of 20 was predicted 11th and he got third place. So he got, got a massive amount of points. Yeah. I don't think that, uh, it, it doesn't look like they'll have the prediction stuff or even a very clear, uh, way of seeing exactly how many points you get like raised or lowered, but you, it does sit like, it does look like you will be able to, see even in these with companion app after a race how whether and how your score changed like whether it went up or down um and what your new score is um at the end of any given race um, yeah. so even even like you open the activity and it shows the the kind of race results part um so in with companion there's the activity uh you open up the activity and it shows race results. Um, it looks like it'll show, okay, race results and racing score. This is what your racing score is and whether it went up um, based on that race. So that's, that's nice. Um, as always, we, I'm sure we all have our hopes about what this ends up turning into and how um, accessible and whether they're going to be able to, include points races that's uh something that i'm really hopeful for but um regardless this is i think this is a good step in the right direction and we'll we'll be interested to see kind of the i'll, I'll be following the feedback in the forums and stuff as we go so so when is this live now as part of uh, some I of think those the series first races are july 1st okay love it let's get into it so you can see your you can see your category or your your uh, your score for now on Zwift Power, um, and I think even in Companion App, if you um, look at your profile, um, I wasn't able to see it there, but I can see it on on Zwift Power. Um, but yeah, the Z, the Z Racing, Zwift Crit Racing, um, both start uh, having events July first, so on Monday. Love it. Cool. Yeah, it's great. Um, uh, you know what? Does you're just in there talking about all this stuff you're gonna see in companion app? It's like, how hard would it be to just clone that into like an HTML web page for browsers? I can't feel like it's that hard. Like the because just the Zwift website is like I'm. I was looking for my rate. Like I was looking for see what my racing score was, which I can now see on Zwift Power. But I looked for that on the Zwift website, and you get the same old performance data. Like. Anyway, we're not here to complain. We're here to enjoy. <laughs> I mean, we're kind of here to complain. We, 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 we still have a separate website for, 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 our, for our racing, even though it's owned by Zwift with Zwift Power. So, so yeah. I, I like just, just do all the things a companion does on a web page. <laughs> like... uh, so, actually, on the Zwift.com website, if you uh, go to your profile. It also does show your racing score there. I was just looking at it. Uh, yeah, but, no, but like then you have, have to. So basically, you have, you have to do an extra click. Basically, you have to go. To, you have to click the my profile. Uh, yeah, like on the side oh. where if you're on your activity feed, you have to click my profile next to your name on the side. Oh, okay, there it is. All right. Uh, yeah. When I clicked some other button that said profile, it did not show me this page. It showed me yeah. something else. And now I see it there. Um, but point one of the points being, like, I'm really interested in in whether a lot of people um, 
So this this means that the herd beginner racing will be opened up a little bit more. Um, there will be more categories. Um, I don't know whether that's going to mean differences in um, in course choices or or. Yeah, it sounded like it sounds like for now not. So, for instance, next week it'll be everybody one lap of Deus France, but I think it probably won't change like the nature of the choices. But I do think there's a possibility of more um, targeting to the ability levels, if I can put it that yeah. way. Right? That the uh, that instead of maybe just like the A B like the the D tier one or D tier two or whatever, that there will be more than just two different course lengths if it's like you know one lap or two lap it'll be like there'll be a one two and three lap type option or you know a custom finish you know that's at one point and then one that's like 50 percent more than that one 75 percent more than that just to i mean you know beginner racing is a beginner but not all beginner racers are d fitness right so yeah so uh if you are interested in the in in potentially getting into the Heard beginner races, take a look at what your racing score is. And if you are under 500, you will now be able to race those. Um, and that, that does essentially mean like up to kind of mid, mid to low high C, um, probably not the, like the tippy top of C. Um, but if you're, if you're a C, there's a decent chance that you're under that threshold, um, and yeah. probably able to race in, one of those, I mean, depending on where you're at, like you, you might be in kind of that, that third category down even. Um, so you might be able to rate like this, this opens up the, the herd beginner racing to a lot more people. Um, I am a little worried about like, you know, we, this, this was initially pitched as like, this is, this is the, lower category racing and we don't want to overwhelm the uh those newer racers with a lot of people who are a lot stronger but i guess the the point of this is really like you're hopefully you're getting a lot of people and potentially more people around your level uh than you would otherwise so um yeah interested to see yeah. how it goes yeah i think it's uh, because i said that like um if you look at the, the category enforcement, some um, at that three point watts per kilo, so lowish mid C, well, still on the lower side, like 331. So that would put me in that mid section of the Zwift uh, racing up, but that's basically on my, just basically on the seat level. So I think it's, Maybe difficult to to, to 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 make your conclusion on that, like I said, because it it's a, just seat on your 30, 30 second and your ten minute power. It can be something totally different. Like I said, with the with the Swift racing up, you can have like a terrible thing on your compound score, but then you do races and you rise up uh, again. I think it's uh, only after a few races uh, have done a a couple of. Uh, full out races, uh, probably your real scores start to show up and then you can see where you're really at. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's something we've, it's something we've all been looking for for a long time. So, um, I kudos to Zwift for getting her up and where we look forward to working with it and seeing how it all shakes mm -hmm. out and hopefully it, it results in some fun and interesting racing. Yeah, kudos for them for for bringing still uh, wanting the expertise of like uh, Tim Ansel from uh, Swift Racing App, who basically done that entire website on his own, uh, which with a pretty good logic behind it. So, so if if uh, even a small fraction comes from the Swift Racing App into the Swift Racing score. In that logic it would be interesting to see because a very good experience with us with facing up uh, with doing ladder races and it's and you can see it also with the ladder races that 
it makes sense because uh, you have like rather races, you have the three rank spread for most teams, but a lot of teams, if they can do it, do the more the two rank spread to keep it tighter, uh, to keep the races more evenly, and it works for, for those. Uh, so for having interesting races, because you're racing teams around your level, and it's, it's quite interesting to see. So we'll bring it, would it be interesting to see it bring it to a format outside of it, but it's other other things I've been using, it, like I said, Chasing Tour, DRS, I've been using the, the Zwift Racing app rule, so there's already series that have used racing board, racing score based uh, rankings before, and hopefully it, uh, uh, yeah, it brings it now to the general masses in the in the Zwift race in the general Swift races. Uh, I will say, you know, you, you the the kudos I think also extend to Zwift in just not abandoning this. Um, yeah, yeah. I think there was True. some worry in the community that I mean, it, there were some layoffs uh, a few months ago, and it it was I think made public that the person that was running the Zwift Racing Score. Uh, project was let go. Um, and so I think that a lot of people were like, all right, well, I guess they've just abandoned that. Like they had a good idea and then they just said, well, never mind. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, they kept working on it behind the scenes. Uh, seems like they brought some good people in to help and yeah, hopefully, uh, gives a better experience than, uh, people felt like the first version did. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully that means that they're working on lots of other stuff behind the scenes that we don't know about but have always wanted to work out well. Hope, hope springs eternal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we will say with that, thank you to Steph and Jen. Thank you to Chris Greenland. Thank you to Sean Fogenberg. Thank you to all of you listening at home. I uh, enjoy your races, everybody. Even three crazy trips up the grid. And boo and good night. Okay. Mm -hmm.